My name is Adam Mitchell, board member of Songwriters Guild of America. I'm Rick Carnes, the president of the Songwriters Guild of America. And you just heard one of my very favorite artists and writers, Miss Ruby Amanfu, and one of my very favorite people on top of it. So um, Rick and I frequently have uh, this discussion, are there any young new artists who are as good as the older artists? And I'm a big believer that they are, and Ruby's proof of it. And um, Rick is just getting to know Rudy, so... Absolutely. Well, first of all, that was a great song. I liked it. I like the uh, modal kind of the was it drop D tune. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Uh, thanks. And you, you move the melody around really pretty in there. So it's it's hard to kind of like stay on one chord and do something yeah. interesting, and yeah. when you can, it always works. Yeah. And also, second, let me compliment your name because the name Ruby has a storied tradition in country music. <laughs> no, it does. It's, it's surprising that I'm from Ghana, West Africa. <laughs> but, you, but you're from the country. That's uh, right. Way out, way out the country. <laughs> good, good, good. We love that. We love that. That's and also, right. you, Ruby, you had that song in Secret Life of Bees, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm, a movie. A beautiful, beautiful version. Well, we're going to play a couple more of uh, little bits of Ruby's songs here, and uh, we suggest that very strongly that you check out the full length version of them. And um, let's play one of my favorite songs here. Ruby wrote a song. Tell us about the suitcase song while I'm setting this up. So there, uh, I was at the airport like I am lots of times, and um, I saw these suitcases going by with with their owners, and something just came to life in me, and I thought, you know, what would it be like if a suitcase could talk? It, 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 if it could tell my story and the, the story of so many of, of, of us who travel for a living, and uh, I think it's self-explanatory. My suitcase would be accusing the handlers of abuse. That would be, <laughs> would be a, a, some sort wow, of... Wow, then listen to the words carefully. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
So that song is one of those big metaphor songs mm. where the suitcase becomes the metaphor of a person and why they keep it around and what, yeah. because they're strong mm. and you can, you know, you'll always be a dependable kind of thing. Right. Uh, but the kids don't like it. It's yeah. like, so oh, do that's you, a great line. Do, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Your kids <laughs> don't like it. It pulls it all together. So uh, when you write, do you, do you do a lot of poetic kind of stuff like that where you use metaphorical things or do you? Gosh, you know, I don't even know if it's something I do on purpose, but but this song came pretty quickly, and, and I wrote it, so I, the thoughts started coming to my head at the concourse. I got on the plane, and I took the sleeve of the, the ticket, and I wrote, oh, started just free thought writing. And then you lost the sleeve of the ticket. <laughs> and and, and I, I kept the sleeve of the... <laughs> that's a first, yeah, because it it Adam and I, it's just gone yeah, instantly. Yeah, well, I, that's why, well, well, that's John Prine's phone number, which is on a piece of paper. <laughs> I can't <laughs> find. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How many times does John Prine give me his number? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, so, I just, I kind of have just this free form of thought. You know, I think if, if I think back to my childhood, I did write a lot of poetry. Yeah, okay. Well, because it shows yeah, in the lyrics. Yeah, right? a lot of poetry. Now, did you stuff. start off writing poetry, or did you start playing music and then bring the poetry to your music? Oh, you know, um, well, lyrics have always been my first love. My girl. Yeah, have <laughs> always been. You're, you're totally wrong about that. <laughs> always my first love. So it, does, it didn't matter if I was taking a walk with my dad when I was four and singing the flowers all the way, you know. Yeah, it's true. It's just, it would always come. Um, and when I started, actually I started entering some contests in school, liter literary contests um, from fifth grade, where we had a short story section, a lyric writing section, poetry. Sure. Yeah. So that was always Very it for me. That, right. yeah. So So when did you yeah. bring the music in? Well, you, yeah, I never studied piano or guitar. It was always something I learned later, actually in college. So it was always when somebody who played um, an in instrument other than voice. So for like, you, basically, yeah. you had already had a way to express yourself, and bringing the music in mm -hmm. was an addition to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, a, and a wonderful one, but but I, I think the lyrics are at the, at the heart of a lot of songs. Which is why Adam, obviously, uh, <laughs> is like, Adam is oh, such no, a totally lyric one of the reasons. He's such a lyric guy. <laughs> but you have a fabulous sense of melody, which is the reason why your, yeah, your words yeah, work. Yeah. Which is what I'm trying to convince mm. Adam of. Well, we're going to have this argument later. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking uh, that's, to <laughs> but you know, here. We're here to talk to Ruby. Yeah, we're here to talk to Ruby. Not to carry on a blood feud. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I will also tell you one thing. When my wife and I went to see Ruby the first time, she and I, and my co writer, had hired her to sing a song here in Nashville. And you were playing at 12th and Porter. And, and we went to see her, and we were so impressed, not simply by her singing and her music, but by her physical grace. Uh, we sat, we did, we sat in the car on the way home. You know, you could have turned off the sound for like an hour and a half and just stood there and watched her. She is so genuinely <laughs> physically you. graceful. Thank so, you so much, that's Adam. Just Adam oogling beautiful women. That's another <laughs> thing that he does. Yeah, what can I say? Yeah, right. uh, I can't apologize enough. He doesn't and, you, and you just made me a board member. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So he he wasn't moment. representing the songwriters guild at that show. You know, I, I think it, he has his limits, so he's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I'm, go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah, I, I'm, I could talk all day. Yeah. I just have so many questions. Uh, here's another fantastic song of Ruby's, one of my favorites. Let me go back in here. Uh, when you were talking about poetry, there is a line in this. I'll, we can talk about it afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know what it is. There's a line in this song, Sarah, which is uh, describe what Sarah is about. Of course, um, Sarah is a song. It, it's a very conversational piece, less poetry. So you'll see this different side of me, but it's a very conversational piece about a woman who discovers that the man she is seeing is not, in fact, the man she thought he was. That's never happened. I was just going to say, not that that happened very often. <laughs> right. no. That's another program. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, there is a line in here, and we can talk about it after it's which. I think this is like one of your first four songs that I heard. Yeah. That have uh, yeah. There's a line in here, and we'll talk well, about it. Well, one of the first of the Sam and Ruby said. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And um, as soon as I heard this line, I went, absolute genius. To me, it was like the gold, the gold standard. So, and it is poetic, and yet it's 
conversational at the same time. That's, that's, so it, that's uh, the goal. This is to make it poetry, but make it sound mm -hmm. like regular speech. Yeah. Exactly. That is the goal. Once I you get there, that. you're over the bar. That's yeah, right. I love that. So uh, this is Sarah. Okay. <clears throat> Those are the, the best 